This is chapter 6, Amines and Amides, uh, part 2, commentary. Um, uh, part 2, commentary. A. In this commentary, we're going to go ahead and focus on the Amides portion of the chapter. We're going to go ahead and focus on um, amide functional groups. And on the very first slide, here we see the um, generic example of an amide functional group. Now, <clears throat> in this example, um, you'll notice that you have a carbonyl group here, and you have a amine here, which is directly attached. So, an amide, you can think of it as a acid, where instead of having a alcohol group, you have a amine group that's attached. That's how I always remember it. So, am from amine, and then ide from acid. So, we call this a amide group. Um, here are classic examples of amides. Um, form amide this is the common name, um, and it's a, a precursor reagent um, used in medicines. Since a lot of medicines, um, they tend to have um, either amines or amides on them. Um, here's another example over here, and this is a common name again, um, acetamide. Um, and this is actually a nice uh, precursor for various synthetics. Um, again, notice that they have the carbonyl group. And on that same very carbon, you have a amine group that's attached. So a carbonyl group and an amine attached. As far as naming um, using the UPAC method. First of all, we're going to go ahead and focus on primary amides. We know it's a primary amide because if we look at the amine, it's only connected to one other carbon. For a secondary amide, then you would know it's connected to two carbons and so forth. But I'm only going to have you know the um, UPAC naming scheme for the primary amides. Um, also known as the unsubstituted amides. So all you have to do is drop the E, as you see here, and then replace it with amide. So in this case, if the parent right here is normally methane, then you drop the E and you replace it with amide. Consequently, we have methanamide, um, and we have ethanamide. So, know how to use the UPAC names. Here are, um, are the original common names. The common names you'd have to memorize, but I would expect you to be able to predict UPAC-wise um, various primary amides, such as this one over here. This is butanamide. Uh, this one over here, when you have a functional group, it's 2-fluoroacetamide. Carbon 1, carbon 2, 2-fluoroacetamide. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few others. Um, so if we go back to the naming amines and amides slides, and you were to scroll down, Um, again, primary amides, make sure you know the UPAC uh, method of naming it. And then if I give you a common name, then yes, you would have to memorize it. Um, so this is an example of a primary amide. If you go to a secondary amide, so here's a nice example right here. Notice the nitrogen, which I've highlighted. Um, this right here has two carbons directly attached. That's why it's a secondary amide. For these, um, you don't have to memorize unless I give you the common name. 
I give you a common name, then memorize the common name. Short of that, I would never ask you the UPAC name on the secondary or tertiary. Um, only the common name for selected molecules. Let's go to this example over here. Here are classic ones I could ask you to give the UPAC name for. So in this case, um, it's the parent carbon is five carbons long. One, two, one, two, three, four, and five. So in this case, this would be called pentanamide. If you like including the number one for the location, you can do that if you want. However, these always occur at the end of our hydrocarbon derivatives, so the one is implied. But if you put it in there, it, um, you can do that. You have that option. Let's go to this one over here. This one's a little bit more complicated. So if we go ahead and take a look at the parent right here. In this case we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Ignore that window. Um, so the parent is 6 carbons long. And then on carbon 3 you have um, a sec butyl. On carbon 4 you have a um, carbon 4 you have a methoxy. So we would name this as 4 methoxy 3 sec butyl um, hexane amide or hexanamide. So let's go to this one over here. Um, this one I think is the trickiest because we have both a amine group and we have a amide. So this one's a little bit trickier. Um, if I were to sit there and name this, here's the parent carbon, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so this would be, let's see, the amines on carbon three, so it'd be three amino, Two, three, four, five. Pentanamide. Pentanamide. The um, amides, um, because they're at the end, um, they will always have priority. Um, so we'd start on the end where the amide is present. So three amino pentanamide. Now. As far as practicing with the um, computer's naming scheme, if I were to sit there and highlight this molecule up here and name it, uh, you'll notice that for these smaller molecules, it likes to go directly to the common name. So um, the uh, auto naming feature on the program may not always work properly for these smaller molecules. If we go to the bigger molecules, um, we have the same type of issue. Um, it uses a older um, naming scheme that um, I don't cover in this class. So if you notice it says pentanoic acid amide, that would be incorrect on the exam. It would actually be pentanamide. Um, so again, for um, these, um, you have to uh, uh, watch your naming schemes on these. It may not always work properly um, when it comes to this automatic naming program. Um, so let's go ahead and um, go back to the slides. Here are examples of secondary um, and tertiary alcohols. 
you have to memorize these examples. So um, here is the UPAC name, here is the common name. It turns out whenever we have a branch on the amide itself, then it uses um, the N notation. Um, so it would be N methyl, and then the rest of this would be the parent methanamide. Um, bottom line is you have to memorize these examples. It's nice to know what the N notation stands for, but these are the only ones I'm going to test you on. All right, when it comes to amides, um, as a pure substance, PS, it hydrogen bonds. So in this case, um, a hydrogen from another nearby amide will bond to the carbonyl oxygen and so forth. Now, the thing about these is you can have multiple hydrogen bonds very similar to the carboxylic acid. Even more so, you can have a... Um, each of these has a very high polarity. Um, now, it turns out that uh, what happens on these, you'll have something weird where, um, and I'll go ahead and I'll erase those other comments. Let me go ahead and highlight this. On this molecule right here that I'm highlighting, it turns out that the double bond, oops, there we go, turns out that the double bond, one of the pi bonds in the double bond, will actually flip on over. We uh, talked about this um, called resonance when we talked about aromatic structures. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight, or roughly highlight the double bond. It's going to go ahead and flip over. And what will happen is you'll have a molecule which will look like this right here. So, um, and I'm actually going the wrong direction when I'm flipping. So I apologize on this one. That's going to screw you up. But here we have our lone pair. This one's going to form a brand new double bond. And this pi bond right here, instead of going to the right, it's going to go up. And it's going to form a brand new um, lone pair. And it will look something like this. I'll draw it on the other side. So, this is called resonance, resonance, and my point in this is when the um, a new bond forms, a new pi bond forms, and a old pi bond forms a lone pair, such as the example we show right here, you'll notice that it forms a temporary um, positive and negative charge. So this is temporary, it's not permanent, so we don't classify it as ionic. But um, what we do um, focus on is the fact that amides have a very naturally high polarity because of this resonance effect. Um, and even though it's temporary, it still contributes to its high polarity. Do you have to know um, about this resonance and, and um, that weird new pi bond forming and the old one breaking? No. What you have to know is there are multiple hydrogen bonds, and because of that resonance effect, there's a very high polarity. What this means is amides have a higher boiling point, than acids. Now, 
even though they have a higher boiling point than acids um, because of that effect, they're not um, classified as ionic forces, though. They're still not as powerful as salts when it comes to polarity. So they have an overall lower boiling point than acid salts. That um, ionic form that you saw earlier was temporary, whereas acid salts is permanent. So it has much stronger intermolecular force for acid salts. Um, so overall, amides have a um, lower boiling point than acid salts. So let's go ahead and review this really quick. Due to hydrogen, multiple hydrogen bonding and high polarity, they have a higher boiling point than acids, but a lower boiling point than acid salts. Beat that to death. Let's move on. Now we're looking at a mixture. A mixture. So if the other slide was about pure substances, this is about a mixture. So in this case, um, in this example, we see water as our target solvent, and you can see how the oxygen and the hydrogen are forming hydrogen bonding. So yes, the dominant intermolecular force when it's mixed in water is hydrogen bonding. So this would be good old-fashioned hydrogen bonds. And it'll form multiple hydrogen bonds with water. Um, so it makes it really soluble in water. Um, before I move on, let's go ahead and, and focus on one other important feature. And it's not explicitly said in the slides, but it's also very important. Um, it is overall neutral in water neutral in water. So it doesn't act as an um, acid or base, it's neutral in water. Um, because of, and I'll just go ahead and I'll focus on this molecule that I'm highlighting right here, because of that weird um, hydrogen bonding effect where it likes to form a pi bond and new lone pair. Um, it doesn't pick up a, um, it doesn't act as a Bronsted base and pick up a hydrogen like the amines do. So consequently it's neutral in water. So that's one way we can test to figure out is a, it, are we dealing with an amide or an amine? Um, well, it, is it neutral in water or not? If it was overall basic then that would be an amine. If it's neutral then it's a am i So let's go ahead and go back to the um, examples. So going back to this slide right here where it shows um, intermolecular forces focusing on a combination of amines and amides. So, um, if we go ahead and um, let's go ahead and take a look at pure substance molecules just to resummarize. So, in this case, ionic forces is the highest. Um, so, anything that's an acid salt is ionic forces. The second highest are going to be what I'm highlighting here is amides. Amides. Um, and then underneath that, it's going to be hydrogen bonds. Um, although amides and acids both hydrogen bond, um, the amides can actually form more hydrogen bonds than the than carboxylic acids dimer. It's also a very strong um, has a very extra strong dipole um, due to that resonance effect that we talked about earlier. Underneath acids, we have alcohols. And then underneath that, just to, as a refresher, we have amines. Although amines also hydrogen bond like alcohols, keep in mind they have a lower overall polarity since nitrogen is a little bit um, less electronegative than oxygen is. And therefore it's, um, it has a overall lower intermolecular force and lower boiling point. If we keep going down the line, we have the secondary amine. Notice it has another carbon attached. 
does hydrogen bond though, although it's a little bit lower than, uh, well, it's definitely lower than the alcohol and a little bit lower than a primary. And then finally, we have our tertiary amine. Notice, even though it has a lone pair, it has no hydrogens directly attached, so now it's London forces as a pure substance. Let's go over to this side over here. Here we have, <coughs> um, uh, well, well, here we have the amines, and we talked about the amines last time. Um, and let's go ahead and go down here. This is what I want to focus on. When you stick an amine inside water, some of the amines, not all of them, but some of them, may end up chemically reacting with the water. <clears throat> and it'll form a, um, it'll actually form what we call a ammonium ion. So this would actually be ionic forces. Um, but more importantly, these amines, when they're put into water, they're basic. Because they'll pick off a hydrogen from the water in order to create this ammonium ion. Compare that one to this molecule right over here. This is a amide, an amide. Um, an amide does not react with water. There is no reaction. Um, it will dissolve in water, but it will not chemically react with water. Consequently, it's overall neutral. So. That summarizes this portion of the slides.